I worked in Hong Kong for a while and I used to come into Thailand for uh, occasionally stay at monastery and I'd heard about Ajahn Chah and I came uh, I came to his monastery Wat Panana Cha in Ubon and I was told that he disappeared he'd, someone said he'd got fed up with the monks and he'd gone off and they didn't know where he'd gone uh, Which year, and we sir? would see him I'm guessing that would be late 70s, maybe 78, something like that. And I went to the monastery and they said, well, he got fed up with the monks because they don't do what he told them to do and so he's gone off, we don't know where he is. So I was, I just sat down on the bench, I wasn't quite sure what to do and uh, just just contemplated things and uh, lo and behold, Lung Po Cha just he just appeared and smiled and said hello. Uh, so it was, um, he's always been a very warm, spontaneous man. And I've always, one thing that interested me about L uh, Lung Po Cha was that when he would be in the monastery, there would be either visiting dignitaries from the government or people from high social castes or the, even the local people. But even when he spoke to the local people, he gave, as he spoke, he gave each one his totally undivided attention. There was no discrimination whatsoever on account of social standing or anything like that. And uh, so when you communicated with uh, Lung Po Cha, it, 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 it was total. I mean, it was, I can't really say any more than that. And he was a man with enormous humor, uh, a lovely smile, great warmth, uh, I think perhaps one of the, the great characters of the world. Very, very simple man. Uh, I remember when he came to England in 1977 to establish the monastery there. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, and he, he arrived and when he left Thailand, somebody, I don't know who, gave him some jewels, precious jewels, just gave them to him, so he took them. And when he arrived, uh, he met some, some of the girls who are now nuns, well, were nuns, one is, and he gave them the jewels. <laughs> they were just visiting, they were just visiting Hampstead, and uh, I mean, he. That, that was the, that was the, that was the sort of thing he did, you know. Uh, one of them was Chanda Siri. Uh, <clears throat> she's still a nun in uh, uh, Amravati. I think Amravati. Vati, I'm not sure. She might be at another branch monastery. And uh, yeah, she she was surprised, and she doesn't know what happened to the jewels either. She gave them to someone else. So I don't know where they could be anywhere now. Uh, Tanisra he gave one to, and I think Rochana, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I think it was Rochana. Uh, so, that was, I mean, that was just the warmth and spontaneity of Ajahn Chah. He was very, very simple man, never at a loss, always great, great humor, great smiles. Uh, but what impressed me most about him was he was never ever at a loss. He was always at a point of total balance and had a enormous humor. Uh, he wanted nothing for himself. He was incredibly simple and wonderful smile, wonderful everything. He was uh, really uh, just uh, an example of a living Buddha.